organist, which you're about to hear, Hammond B3 player, but he's played with such renowned jazz musicians as Jimmy Smith, Joey DeFrancesco, Ron Carter, Bruce Foreman, and the list goes on and on. And he's agreed uh, through the, the graciousness of Pete Falco, who, where's Pete? Right here in front, to come and play for us today. And, and just tell us a little bit about the Hammond B3. It's one of my favorite instruments, and uh, I think you're going to really dig it. So, please welcome Mr. Tony Monaco. Good morning. It's an honor to be here, and I'd like to thank the uh, Monterey Jazz uh, Summer Camp for inviting me as a clinician. And uh, this clinic is brought to you by the uh, Jazz Organ Fellowship, Mr. Pete Falco, and all the great people involved with the fellowship. So enjoy yourselves. We're going to do a little bit of jazz organ. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
we talked a little bit earlier at the, at the uh, guitar clinic uh, about the combination of jazz organ, the organ, and the guitar. And one thing that we didn't get a chance to talk about was the combination with the drums. The organ player has a lot of control because I'm playing bass and I'm playing right hand and leads and comp and I'm director. And um, you have to have musicians that understand the concept of playing with organ because it's different. The bass is kind of wooey. It's not like a real bass guitar. It's more of a wooey sound. It's not real percussive. So what I do is I use the foot pedals to thump to give me a little bit of thump. center where it's at and what I just enjoyed about this is I've never played with Vince before but I knew that I could trust where he was at all times and so as I started laying combinations down he started playing back at me and, uh, it's a pleasure man I really good we're going to do a new thing uh, another style this is called squabbling and what this is is like a Freddie Green kind of thing where I get this little comp happening and um, it's a beautiful thing I think you're going to enjoy this
something that uh, is very important when you're learning how to play music is you first you're, you're trying to learn the instrument that you're playing, and then you're trying to learn the notes that you want to learn how to play. And you and you and you go out and you discover all these different players, and you work real hard on gaining knowledge about the interpretations of the music, whether you're using a Locrian mode or Aeolian approach or all these different approaches, which are all important. But at some point in time, you have to develop a relationship with your instrument, and you have to develop a relationship with this thing we call music. And as you noticed on this last tune, uh, I used one of the most important aspects of music that's not written on paper as far as notes. It's called dynamics because nothing can do better to bring your audience closer to you than turning it down. When you turn it down, everybody kind of comes into you and everybody relaxes. And notice that we didn't play a million notes on this last tune, we left a lot of space, including the very end. I just kind of, it's music. You're making a beautiful thing happen. It's a spiritual event, so you make it happen. So that was great, man. That's called squabbling. That was a, a style that Jimmy Smith invented uh, after one of his idols, uh, Fats Waller. Errol Garner. And, and, and Errol Garner. But he loved Fats Waller as well. And uh, you got that CD where he's got all those Fats Waller tunes and he squabbles all those tunes. It's so beautiful. Anyhow, uh, I passed out some flyers. And um, if you guys uh, are interested in the organ, uh, I give you information on how you can contact me. And um, there's, some ins there's some information also on the back of this as to uh, draw bar settings and things that I'm using. So now I'm going to change the style around and do some, a little ballad and uh, show you how you can use the organ to sustain notes forever. And I'm going to use the Leslie speaker because the Leslie is not just an amplified speaker, but it's actually a sound modification for the organ. In combination, this thing has different speeds. And I'll flip the switch and notice that this horn is spinning. Can you all see? That starts throwing the sound around, but it also has a 15-inch speaker mounted inside this cabinet. And it's a bass reflex, that's why you're hearing the bass. But on the bottom, there's another rotor. It's a bass rotor with a baffle in it, and it throws the sound around. So as I hold a low note, you'll hear the rotor on the bottom as I slow it down. Listen how long it takes for it to slow down and wind down to zero. is I take advantage of that wind up time and the, and the slow down time and I incorporate it into the music. So I'm going to do a ballad where I'm switching speeds a lot and you'll hear the bottom rev up and slow down and it becomes this morphing sound. So how about, um, um, dun, 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 dun. what's that tune? Uh, tenderly. <laughs> it's an E flat. I can't remember the name. <laughs>
noticed that the low tones were kind of slowing down and speeding up at a different rate than the high tones. And that's what makes this Leslie speaker so important. There are organ players that don't play with the Leslie speaker, like Brian Auger. He prefers that real dry, gritty sound. But most jazz organists play with the Leslie speaker. So they're kind of like, you need both of them to uh, create these effects. So that was the uh, example of how a Leslie speed works. Now we're going to play something a little bit more up and just uh, kind of let the organ be like a, you know, like this uh, monstrous uh, soloing instrument. And um, let's do something like, um, Sweet Georgia? Sure. Look here we go. About right here. <laughs>
You know, when you're working through things and you get frustrated, it means you've got to go back and shed a little bit. And, and a lot of times what happens to me as a player, when I start getting frustrated, it's because my ears are starting to open up to a new sound. Because no matter how many times I might listen to a Larry Young record or a Don Patterson record, you can't hear what they're doing until you're ready to hear it. Until you're musically progressed to that point where you start to hear, oh, he's substituting, or you know, he likes to take those things in two fives, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When you start hearing that, you start getting bored with your own playing because all of a sudden you're hearing these other tones and you want to start doing that. So whenever you get in a plateau, my suggestion is get the old metronome out and start practicing scales, arpeggios, turnarounds, chord changes, and start listening to those records, or CDs records, <laughs> uh, CDs that, um, <laughs> CDs that have um, stuff going on in it that you want to learn and start working on those things. And the best way to do that is learn, learn new tunes, work on new tunes, new concepts. Uh, Oleo, rhythm changes, those are important things to work on because you can do an awful lot with rhythm. Um, the organ is a very expressive instrument, as you can tell, and it also is a masterful blues instrument. So I'd like to do like a, a G blues or something sure. and just kind of take our time with this and relax. I have a hard time relaxing, as you can tell. <laughs> One.
Give it, give it some space, so that way when you do bring in the dynamics, and you do bring in all the notes, then it's special. But yet, lay back. So, as an organ player, I have, I have the ability to drown everybody out or force everybody to play too hard. So, I think maybe before we leave, let's do, let's do a, a Latin tune or something like that where we get a little space. How about OGD? <laughs> Hey, Tony, can I ask you one question? Yeah, yes. I should ask some questions here. Well, I just want to ask you about your left leg. Okay. How long did it take you to physically get your left leg ready? Because you've been playing for 45 minutes, and I don't think your thighs touched the bench once. <laughs> you know? I right. mean, it takes a lot of strength. Of course. Of holding that leg up. And, uh, well, is that a lot of development? I mean, outside of the practice time you put in there. But. Well, you know what it is? Is what I used to do when I, when I first started out, I would try to duplicate what I did with my left hand, mm -hmm. with my left foot, even though it's hard with, you know, just a heel and a, right. and a toe and the toes. But try to develop bass lines because, you know, the, the simpler sometimes the better. And especially I got to be very economical here. Right. So um, then it, it, it's many years of playing gigs and doing it that the, the 
the muscles have developed to hold my leg up to do that. Yeah. But it began with me just trying to duplicate what I was doing with my left hand with my left foot. And, and when you just touch it lightly, you yeah. get the percussive thing, right? That's right. So but if like you touch it harder, you get a note. That's right. That's so right. I might do something like this. Range. Right, exactly. And if you stay down at the low notes, it gets muddy and it gets ineffective. Right, right. So I use the thump to give me that percussive hit. Right. get stuck playing at the last octave and the way they designed the B3 is the 16 foot which is the length of it represents lengths of pipe is the lowest tone uh. they didn't wire the left hand so that it would play those low tones so in other words if I was to take this just the 16 and and, and play an, uh, a, a, a you know a scale going down right it repeats it goes back up see oh I see yeah. As I right, even though, but it's keyboard. going back to that. Yeah. So the only way to get that is either have a technician wire the 16, but I don't like that because then you could get stuck playing down there all the time. Right, right. So I have to use my physically use my feet right. to get the low notes. Right, right. So, so that's, that's, that's how I do that. So it's thumping to give me that percussive attack, right. or it's laying down notes. Right. There is another style I can show you just briefly that you can use this for counter melody too. It's very difficult to get the mind to do all this. But you, instead of using the 16, you can use the 8, which is an octave higher. Oh, uh -huh. All right, bring it up here. So if you did a, if you did a tune like uh, like a squabble thing, I'll just play the solo just to get the effect. Watch this. I'll play left hand bass, uh -huh. counterpoint. <laughs> Jimmy Smith uh, did a lot of great things together. So uh, this is uh, a tune called OGD. Actually, it's called the Road Song, but it got titled on the record as OGD, Organ Guitar Drums, as Bruce earlier said, Guitar Organ Drums. Yeah, well, that one's wrong. Yeah, I don't want to go. So it should be DOG.
time for quick questions, or did anybody have any? Yes, three. Uh, I start? actually started out on the accordion, and I got turned on to a Jimmy Smith record. That's why I'm saying it's important to listen to music, and I knew that organ right then was going to be my instrument. Yeah. Take it to Arno Pipes and jazz a little bit. I've heard some pipe organists do some wonderful things, but in the organ, no, it's all spinning wheels and tone generators uh, creating a sine wave. That's what this thing does. A question, how hard is it to move this thing? That's <laughs> Pete. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> uh, well, your thoughts, then, on uh, some people. I mean, Skyler uh, has a question, I think. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, first of all, how you get into gigs is, second of all, where do you practice? Uh, do you uh, I have an organ in my house to practice. And uh, then I have a trailer that I keep the organ in, and I usually, and I have two Leslies and extra spare parts and dollies. And so usually when I go on the road, I carry a trailer with me. But it's also, they, uh, like Pete puts us in a van, so it works as well. You get there real early. And you get there real early. <laughs> All right, one more time for Tony Monaco. <laughs> Can't work like a dog. <laughs> 